Chapter 18 of Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Asterix. Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic by Thomas Higginson. Chapter 18 the guardians of the st lawrence when in sixteen eleven the sieur de champlain went back to france to report his wonderful explorations in canada he was soon followed by a young frenchman named vignon who had spent a whole winter among the indians in a village where there was no other white man this was a method often adopted by the french for getting more knowledge of indian ways and commanding their confidence Vignan had made himself a welcome guest in the cabins, and had brought away many of their legends, to which he added some of his own. In particular, he declared that he had penetrated into the interior until he had come upon a great lake of salt water far to the northwest. This was, as it happened, the very thing which the French government and all Europe had most hoped to find. They had always believed that sooner or later a short cut would be discovered across the newly found continent, a passage leading to the Pacific Ocean and far Cathay. This was the dream of all French explorers and of Champlain in particular, and his interest was at once excited by anything that looked toward the Pacific. Now Vignan had prepared himself with just the needed information. He said that, during his winter with the indians he had made the very discovery needed that he had ascended the river ottawa which led to a body of salt water so large that it seemed like an ocean that he had just seen on its shores the wreck of an english ship from which eighty men had been taken and slain by the savages and that they had with them an english boy whom they were keeping to present to champlain this tale about the english ship was evidently founded on the recent calamities of henry hudson of which vignon had heard some garbled account and which he used as colouring for his story the result was that champlain was thoroughly interested in the tale and that vignon was cross-examined and tested and was made at last to certify to the truth of it before two notaries of rochelle Champlain privately consulted the Chancellor de Syrie, the old Marquis de Brissac, and others, who all assured him that the matter should be followed up, and he resolved to make it the subject of an exploration without delay. He sailed in one vessel, and Vignan in another, the latter taking with him an ardent young Frenchman, Albert de Brissac monsieur de vignan talking with the young brissac on the voyage told him wonderful tales of monsters which were he said the guardians of the st lawrence river there was he said an island in the bay of chaleur near the mouth of that river where a creature dwelt having the form of a woman and called by the indians Kugu she was very frightful and so enormous that the masts of the vessel could not reach her waist she had already eaten many savages and constantly continued to do so putting them first into a great pocket to await her hunger some of those who had escaped said that this pocket was large enough to hold a whole ship this creature habitually made dreadful noises and several savages who came on board claimed to have heard them a man from saint malo in france the sieur de prevert confirmed this story and said that he had passed so near the den of this frightful being that all on board could hear its hissing and all hid themselves below lest it should carry them off this naturally made much impression upon the young sieur de brissac and he doubtless wished many times that he had stayed at home on the other hand he observed that both m de vignan and m de prevert took the tale very coolly and that there seemed no reason why he should distrust himself if they did not 
yet he was very glad when after passing many islands and narrow straits the river broadened and they found themselves fairly in the st lawrence and passed the haunted bay of chaleur they certainly heard a roaring and a hissing in the distance but it may have been the waves on the beach but this was not their last glimpse of the supposed guardians of the st lawrence as the ship proceeded farther up the beautiful river they saw one morning a boat come forth from the woods bearing three men dressed to look like devils wrapped in dog skins white and black their faces besmeared as black as any coals with horns on their heads more than a yard long and as this boat passed the ship one of the men made a long address not looking towards them then all three fell flat in the boat when indians rowed out to meet them and guided them to a landing then many indians collected in the woods and began a loud talk which they could hear on board the ships and which lasted half an hour then two of their leaders came towards the shore holding their hands upward joined together and meanwhile carrying their hats under their upper garments and showing great reverence looking upward they sometimes cried jesus jesus or jesus maria then the captain asked them whether anything ill had happened and they said in french nini est-il bon meaning that it was not good then they said that their god Kudreni, had spoken in hochelaga montreal and had sent these three men to show to them that there was so much snow and ice in the country that he who went there would die this made the frenchmen laugh saying in reply that their god coudreigny was but a fool and a noddy and knew not what he said tell him said a frenchman that christ will defend them from all cold if they will believe in him the indians then asked the captain if he had spoken with jesus he answered no but that his priests had and they had promised fair weather hearing this they thanked the captain and told the other indians in the woods who all came rushing out seeming to be very glad giving great shouts they began to sing and dance as they had done before they also began to bring to the ships great stores of fish and of bread made of millet casting it into the french boats so thickly that it seemed to fall from heaven then the frenchmen went on shore and the people came clustering about them bringing children in their arms to be touched as if to hallow them then the captain in return arranged the women in order and gave them beads made of tin and other trifles and gave knives to the men all that night the indians made great fires and danced and sang along the shore but when the frenchmen had finally reached the mouth of the ottawa and had begun to ascend it under vignan's guidance they had reasons to remember the threats of the god coudreigny ascending the ottawa in canoes past cataracts boulders and precipices they at last with great labour reached the island of allumette at a distance of two hundred and twenty-five miles often it was impossible to carry their canoes past waterfalls because the forests were so dense so that they had to drag the boats by ropes wading among rocks or climbing along precipices gradually they left behind them their armour their provisions and clothing keeping only their canoes they lived on fish and wild fowl and were sometimes twenty-four hours without food champlain himself carried three french arquebuses or short guns three oars his cloak and many smaller articles and was harassed by dense clouds of mosquitoes all the time vignan brissac and the rest were almost as heavily loaded the tribe of indians whom they at last reached had chosen the spot as being inaccessible to their enemies and thought that the newcomers had fallen from the clouds when champlain inquired after the salt sea promised by vignan he learned to his indignation that the whole tale was false vignan had spent a winter at the very village where they were but confessed that he had never gone a league further north the indians knew of no such sea and craved permission to torture and kill him for his deceptions 
They called him loudly a liar, and even the children took up the cry and jeered at him. They said, Do you not see that he meant to cause your death? Give him to us, and we promise you that he shall not lie any more. Champlain defended him from their attacks, bore it all philosophically, and the young Brissac went back to France, having given up hope of reaching the Salt Sea, except, as Champlain himself coolly said, in imagination. The guardians of the St. Lawrence had at least exerted their spell to the extent of saying, thus far, and no further. Vignon never admitted that he had invented the story of the Cougou, and had bribed the Indians who acted the part of devils. And perhaps he did not. But it is certain that neither the giantess nor the god Coudreigny has ever again been heard from. End of chapter 18